previous lessons, we learned to write and balance chemical equations to represent the changes involved in a chemical reaction, although we were ensured that the number and type of the atoms were the same on each side of the equation. We can use nuclear equations to represent the changes involved in nuclear reactions, although with nuclear equations, it's the atomic number and the mass number that must be conserved on each side of the equation. For example, we can look at the nuclear equation describing the alpha decay of uranium-238. In this case, uranium-238 decays to produce thorium-234 and an alpha particle. The atomic number is conserved on each side of the equation because the parent nuclide, the uranium-238, has an atomic number of 92. On the product side, we see that the sum of the atomic numbers of the daughter nuclide thorium-234, and the alpha particle has a total atomic number of 92. We see the same kind of result for the mass number. Uranium-238 has a mass number of 238, whereas the sum of the mass number for thorium-234 and the alpha particle is also 238. When we study radioactivity, we will be discussing different types of radioactive decay based on the types of particles involved. In this slide, we'll be introducing those different kinds of decay processes. One of the most common types of decay processes is known as alpha decay. We saw an example of this with the decay of the uranium-238 isotope. In that case, it produced an alpha particle, which has a mass number of 4 and an atomic number of 2. Alpha decay quickly reduces the number of neutrons as well as the number of protons in the nucleus. The mass number changes by 4, whereas the atomic number changes by 2. There's a change in the neutron to proton ratio that increases. Another common decay process is beta decay. For example, when radium-228 undergoes beta decay, a beta particle has a mass number of 0 and an atomic number or a charge of negative 1. Beta decay changes a neutron into a proton in the nucleus. In beta decay, daughter nuclide has the same mass number, but the atomic number will increase by one. A gamma ray can be emitted from an unstable nuclide. There is no change in the mass number or atomic number when a nuclide undergoes gamma ray emission. In this case, we could see technetium 99m undergoes gamma emission to produce technetium-99. Another type of emission is positron emission. A positron is a particle that is like an electron, except it has a po positive charge. So for example, phosphorus-30 could undergo positron emission to produce silicon-30. Positron emission changes a proton into a neutron in the nucleus. The daughter nuclide has the same mass number, but the atomic number is decreased by one. Finally, we can have electron capture. In electron capture, a nuclide assimilates an electron from an inner orbital, and in the process, it changes a proton into a neutron. In this example, ruthenium-92 captures an electron from an inner orbital to form the daughter nuclide, technetium-92. In electron capture, there is no change in the mass of the nuclide, although there is a decrease of the atomic number by one. Overall, the ratio of the neutrons to the protons increases. In this problem, we're asked to write the nuclear equation for the beta decay of berkelium-249. We begin this problem by writing the nuclide symbol for berkelium-249. The symbol for berkelium is BK, and the 249 is the mass number, so that will go in the upper left corner. When we look on the periodic table, we see that berkelium has an atomic number of 97, so we'll put that in the lower left corner. The problem indicates that berkelium-249 undergoes beta decay, which means in the nuclear equation there will be a beta particle as a product. The beta particle is represented by the lowercase Greek letter beta, with a mass number of 0 and an atomic number of minus 1. Since we know that in nuclear equations, the values of the mass number and the atomic number have to be conserved 
from one side of the equation to the other, and we know that there's a mass number of 249 on the reactant side, and the beta particle has a mass number of zero on the product side, which means that the daughter nuclide on the product side must have a mass number of 249 as well. When we do the same process for the atomic number, kelium has an atomic number of 97, and the beta particle has an atomic number of minus one. So the 97 minus the negative one tells us that the atomic number of the daughter nuclide must be 98. When we look at the periodic table for element number 98, we see that it's the element californium, which has the symbol CF. So the nuclear equation would be berkelium-249 undergoes beta decay to form the daughter nuclide californium-249. After watching this video, you should be able to write a balanced nuclear equation. You should also be able to describe the various types of decay processes based on the changes in the mass number, the atomic number, and the neutron to proton ratio. The change in the neutron to proton ratio will be helpful in later videos when we try to predict the type of radioactive decay that a nuclide might undergo.